Hi guys, in the last uh, sequence of videos we imported a corpus, we cleaned the corpus up, and now we want to um, uh, create some kind of uh, summarizing or descriptive, uh, maybe visual let's start with, like a word cloud or a comparison cloud um, to the corpus. So once again, let's just remember what we ended off with last video. We had three documents in our corpus and uh, they were each uh, a sports article. So we cleaned them up and here they are, okay? Now what I could do right off the bat is with the word cloud package, I can create a word cloud and if I leave all the defaults as is, you'll see I'll get something. Okay, I see like this is the most frequent word in my corpus and then, uh, you know, it's actually, we could tweak this a bit, we can improve on this, so random.order will set that to false and this will at least put the most frequent terms in the middle. A little color helps as well if we go um, color, we can do like a a rainbow, three colors. I find more than that might not be too useful. And it kind of separates the tiers. So we see here m clearly the most frequent word. And then, like, the second group of most frequent words are here. And then the third are these guys. Okay, so you can look through this and you can see what the corpus, what the documents in the corpus are kind of talking about, what they're referencing, what words they're using, what phrases they're using, okay? Now, maybe I want to improve on this a bit and say, hey, since I have a few documents in my corpus, can I separate this word cloud into three pieces, say, uh, these words came from document one, this, these words came from document two, and these from document three. To do this, we use another function in the word cloud package called comparison cloud. And in order to actually use that, we have to first create a corpus. So, uh, so, so create officially create a corpus, and we'll kind of go through this. But let me just show you what would happen if we applied it right here okay so we would get some kind of error message because it's corpus 2 is not officially a corpus as far as um, word cloud package is concerned so we refer to the TM package and we're going to actually create a corpus so let's call this corpus um, with a capital C okay and we're going to make a corpus. Actually, let's not use that because that's the name of the function as well. So let's call it, um, how about corpus 3. Okay? And this is going to be a vector sourced corpus. We already did all the work. All we have to do is feed it into this function. And this is going to convert it to a corpus in the lingo of the TM package, we have created a corpus of length th well, three, of three documents. Okay, so it's some kind of more abstract entity in R. All right, let's actually open up a new graphics device so we don't override our old word cloud eventually. So what we need to do with this corpus now is to create a term document matrix. Matrix. What is a term document matrix? Well, it's, it's quite simple. You feed it a corpus, and what you're going to get are the terms in the corpus. So every single word that's used in the entire corpus, in all the documents in the corpus, are going to get listed out on the rows. And then the documents are going to get listed out in the columns. So you're going to end up with a matrix that has one row per term used in the entire corpus and one column per document. So for us, I at least know that we're going to have three columns here because we had three documents. So we're going to have a, a somewhat like a matrix of with three columns. How many uh, rows? Well, that kind of 
depends on how many unique words we have. There we go. One, two, three. Okay, so you use long, so ri rise wouldn't count twice. So, and what will be in the body of this actual table? Here we'll get the frequencies. So, for example, if I go to row one, column two, what I should get here is how many times this word, so word one or term one, appeared in this document. So let's say this word was the word unique. How many times does unique show up in document two? Well, we would go and count and we would put that number right here. And so let's say it shows up four times. So you'd see a four there. And for the rest of these cells, it would be exactly the same. So we'll be getting the frequencies of each term in each document. And that's what we're going to create right now. Okay, the, the code to do this is quite simple. Let's call this TDM for term document matrix. And again, the functionality comes from the TM package, credit to them. What you need to feed it is a corpus, an official corpus like what we created here in this step. Okay. And if we actually look at it, we'll see it's a we have some we have a term document matrix a kind of object now. 488 terms, sorry. 488 terms. That answered the question of how many rows. We have three documents, so three columns, okay? Um, 500 and so if you multiply this by this, okay, so this is how many non kind of empty cells there are this is how many empty cells there are okay if we just do a quick bit of math we should be able to understand these numbers a bit look I'm doing this and then I'm doing so you see these two numbers match we're gonna have this many rows this many columns so that means we're gonna have this many cells and then here it's telling us that 535 of those cells, of these cells, are non-empty, so have an actual uh, frequency, and 929 of them are sparse or empty. Okay, that gives us an idea. If we look at this, you can kind of put that in a percentage of the sparsity of the matrix. Okay, term document matrices are usually quite sparse. Okay. So, okay, so we move on. Um, so some of these other things are also useful. You could look at, they're, they're helpful. Okay, but what we wanna do is kind of work with this TDM. So if we just type TDM, it doesn't really help us, but if we do as that matrix, convert it to a matrix for at least a brief moment, we can take a look at what, it, what this thing looks like. And it's kind of what we expected. It's a lot of rows, 488 of them three columns. We have three documents, so we have one column per document, and here are all the words alphabetical, alphabetically listed after the cleanup process, right? So ability showed up zero times in document one, one time in document two, zero times in document three, okay? Look at Aguero. He's, the, he's a player on, a, on Manchester City. He appears zero times in document two, seven times in document, sorry, in document one, seven times in document two, none, zero times in document three. Okay? And you can kind of scroll down and see the rest. So we have a word here, Atletico, shows up in multiple documents. Okay? So now what I want to do is actually using this kind of, let's give this a name. So let's call this like M. Uh, whatever, right? M is just basically what we just looked at. And I want to use these uh, columns and I want to pretty much, so what I want to do is I want to make a comparison word cloud. So I want to make a word cloud for each of the documents and I want them all to be on the same kind of uh, graphic. I don't want to make three separate word clouds. I could do that too quite easily. But uh, here I want I want to kind of get to this idea of a comparison cloud. Now, if I had a name for each of these documents, I could put that in as well instead of calling them document one, two, and three, and it'll be much more meaningful when we get to the output. So let's go ahead and do that. So in fact, you can change these 
from one, two, three to anything we want. In fact, if I go to like column names, you'll see the column names were one, two, three. I can override that. So now I happen to know that the first article was about Cristiano Ronaldo. So let me call it CR. The second one was about Juventus. So let me call it like UV. Like that. And the third one was about Tottenham. So maybe Tottenham. Okay, nice, short, kind of descriptive enough for me. These will be my new column names. If you want to see what happened, you can actually see that the new column names are not one, two, three anymore, but a little more descriptive. Okay, that's going to help me with the output because the next step now, I can make what's called a comparison word cloud. So instead of just a straight word cloud like we saw before, where all the words in the corpus are treated as if they came from one huge document, I can do a comparison word cloud using the function comparison word cloud and just feed it this matrix. And this basically should have enough for it to group the, the terms into their respective document and using a separate color usually to do that and some labeling. So let's see this in action. Here we go. Um, OK, so I left all the settings to default. As you can see, I just fed it my term document matrix as a matrix. So uh, you know, if you want to trim down the number of words you're seeing, clean this up a bit, change the colors, there's, you know, do help and, and look at all the arguments you can, you can kind of apply to tweak this. But I like the results. It's, it's fine for what we're doing here. And I can kind of, you can kind of see what it's done. That's what's important here. All right, so we had three articles. We went, we went through the trouble of labeling them so we don't have one, two, three. So these words right here are from the document called UV, which was on Juventus. This group right here was on the document called CR. And we get this, by the way, here. And these were the frequent terms from the Tottenham article. And we can, just looking at this, we can see what words were used in the overall corpus, but also per document, we could see what words dominated. For example, in this article, no surprise, Ronaldo was the most dominant word. Real Madrid, that's the team he plays on, that's his coach. These were the most common words. In this article, Diabala was by far kind of crowding all the other terms out, okay? And in the Tottenham article, it was a little more uniformly distributed, the words. You see, there isn't one big word, and it isn't as skewed as even in the Cristiano Ronaldo article. You see there's a Ericsson, Whistle, Spurs, and then there's a small let off in the next group. There isn't a, a, a giant difference between the most frequent terms and the second, third, fourth most frequent terms, so on, like there was in the other. Now, besides that, just looking at the words, they might be meaningful. So you could kind of see maybe what, if, what kind of attitudes or what kind of things um, are being said per document, what terms are being used. And you can use this as a, as a kind of investigative tool into your corpus. A little finer than just looking at the word cloud on its own like we did initially. Okay, so this was creating a word cloud and a comparison word cloud uh, for a corpus of three documents uh, that were cleaned in the previous video, imported in the video before that. So I hope this was helpful to you. What I'm going to do in the next video is simply just take one step further perhaps and get a sentiment score for my documents uh, in my corpus. Okay, so be sure to share, subscribe, comment, and until next time, have a great day.